Here are four things I learned about the artist role from my mom. One of us holds a collection of messages, of lessons that we have learned about creativity from those around us. My name is Jenny Velarde. I'm a psychotherapist and just as importantly, I'm an artist. Now, sometimes these lessons that we glean are really useful to us. Sometimes they're not so useful. Definitely watch my episode on artist stereotypes for more on that. And sometimes these messages or lessons are fundamental to the artists, the creators that we become. With this in mind, here are four things that I've learned about the artist role from my mom. And briefly, as I'm going through these, I encourage you to begin to think, what are some of the lessons about creativity that you've learned from your mother or perhaps a mothering figure in your life? So maybe a grandmother, an aunt, a friend, or perhaps that mothering role inside of you. Maybe allow some of these lessons to bubble to mind as we go through these. Number one, invest in storytelling. My mom is a writer by craft and more so my mom is a storyteller. My siblings can definitely attest to this. When we were growing up and my mom would read stories to us, it's like time would stop. No matter what the book was, my mom would take that time to deeply invest in that story at hand. She would become the characters. She would use the inflection and the pitch of her voice, the pacing, the rhythm, the tone. With these elements, she would set the stage. It would make funny stories funnier. It would make scary stories scarier. It was how she chose to tell the story that really made those words pop off the page. Now, similarly, she does the same thing in telling the stories of her life. So whether it's a story from her childhood or perhaps something that happened to her during the course of the day, she invests in the telling of it. Now, as an artist, this unabashed investment in storytelling is so critical because it's the very thing that can turn a good idea into a world, into a universe to step into. Now, of course, this applies if you're a writer, and it also applies if you're a musician crafting a song, an actor bringing a role to life on the stage, a landscape artist bringing a visual story together. Perhaps you're in marketing and rounding out a branding story for a company or an organization. Whatever it is, stepping into that story and telling it with a sense of commitment. Investment will take it to an entirely different level and that's when it becomes captivating. Number two, if you're going to do it, do it right the first time. All right, so here's a little piece of infamous family lore. When I was seven years old, I was putting together a science project all about clouds. It was one of those kind of like bifold projects that's displayed in a science fair. Now I had worked on the project, I was finishing it up. My mom took a look at it. I think she had been away for the evening at work and just kind of coming home. And in no way, did she mince her words in expressing to me that the project wasn't good? She could see right through it. She could see right through me that I really hadn't put my best into this piece. Let's just be frank. I was skirting by and I was hoping that I could float by on minimal effort. It was probably eight or nine o'clock at night and she made me start over. My entire project, which was due the next day, had to be started 
from scratch. Now, let me just add here, she didn't just leave me out to dry. Both she and my dad banded together to help me bring my true vision for this project to life. And it was in the recreation of this work that all of a sudden, I found my groove with it. And I got really excited about what I was creating. Reality is, even decades later, I can still visualize that project with crystal clarity because I felt so confident in the end product. And let me clarify, it wasn't about perfection. It was about producing something of quality because I had the capacity to do it. Now this story has shaped my life ever since because not only did it teach me that if I'm going to put my energy into something, I should aim to do it to the best of my ability, but also it's just more effective to do it that way. It saves me time in the long run and it also saves me emotional energy because rather than feeling guilty, knowing that I really didn't give it my best or my all, I feel a sense of satisfaction and peace knowing that I wholeheartedly gave it my full self and that's the best that I can ask for. Number three, don't put all your eggs in one basket. This was a message that I remember my mom instilling a lot when I was in my teen years and early 20s. She encouraged me to really diversify my creative efforts because she would stress that I would never know how the outcome of my investments would help me grow and advance forward. Now, this is a time where I really diversified and expanded my creative toolbox. I devoted time to the crafts of acting, playwriting, songwriting, playing the electric guitar, oil painting, learning scenic art, and stage design. I aim to sharpen as many tools as I could. And I will tell you, this diversifying of a variety of crafts, putting eggs in different creative baskets, so to speak, has served me in every part of my professional career, not to mention has richened my life as a whole. Number four, collect magic. As a writer, my mom has this little trait of collecting what she calls writing pieces, items, totems that she finds and assembles because they inspire her in some capacity. She has a room full of these little pieces from all over the place. This act, or more so this mind frame, to me feels ageless because in many ways, she's inviting a sense of magic into her life, into her creative process. Now, we all know that the older that we get and the more responsibility we take on, the easier it is to get cynical or to feel steeped in sarcasm or weighted seriousness in some capacity. Though I would argue as both psychotherapist and as an artist and an art lover of all kinds, that when this cynicism seeps in too much, it really can erode creative flow within us. Too much of it can shut down crucial creative pathways. Now, my mom's conscious collecting of things that make her feel magical. To her, keep her in a space of discovery, of curiosity, of imagination, and in a very pragmatic way. This can keep the artist mind fresh and in production, in action. So in many ways, the act of collecting magic, rather than being seen as say childish or kind of like an airy fairy habit, can actually be conceptualized as being a really useful way of keeping creativity flowing. Now note, she also does this not just with physical items, but with people, with places, her research, picking up scraps of story here, there, and everywhere. She carries with her the ageless quality of picking up inspiration, magic, wherever she can find it. So these were four lessons I've learned from my mom about creativity. Now over to you. Two questions. First, were these lessons from my mom helpful for you? 
If so, please leave a comment below. I guarantee you that that would make her thrilled to hear. Secondly, returning to the lessons that you have received from your mother or a mothering figure from your life. Again, perhaps it's a grandmother or a neighbor or a mentor or that mothering space within you. What is one of your greatest lessons? I would love to see in the comments below and learn from you. And as I bring this to a close, a full hearted thank you to my mom. Thank you, mom, for committing to your kids a life teaching of the real world value of creativity and for modeling it firsthand in all that you do, both in your craft as a writer and just as importantly, if not more, in just how you move through the world. Now go and create you were created to. What might your life look like without procrastination holding you back? The procrastination system, a six hour, five segment system built of 20 dynamic and digestible chapters. It's an engaged 360 degree process that guides you through self-reflection to pinpoint your specific version of procrastination and how to turn it into attainable real world progress. It's carefully curated with a massive collection of tools and thought shifts to effectively transform your procrastination from inaction into traction. Reinforced by up-to-date neuroscience that helps us to understand procrastination from a cognitive level. If you feel like your life would look radically different if procrastination wasn't holding you back, the procrastination system is most definitely for you. It was built for you. The link's below. Thanks so much for being here. I appreciate you. If this episode was useful, I would love for you to hit the like button and perhaps share it with someone. For more tool-based, actionable, creative content, please make sure to subscribe. Also, if you have a question about creativity or the artist role that you would like to have answered, please leave it in the comments below and it may be featured in an upcoming episode.